my research investigates Chinese investments in Ethiopia's wind energy infrastructure, focusing on Adama 1 and Adama 2 wind farms. In Ethiopia, more than 70% of the 103 million people do not have access to electricity. And it is seen in particular by the Ethiopian government that investing in these wind farms will address this challenge. However, I'm not just particularly interested in understanding the, uh, the investments, but I also want to know the structuring of these investments. Who is involved in brokering these deals? What are the financing terms and conditions? And what is the management and implementation frameworks of these wind farms? Popular discourses on Chinese involvement in Africa's uh, uh, infrastructure development tend to emphasize that Chinese actually deliver bad infrastructures. Uh, that is in the case of roads, uh, that is in case of telecommunication. And to some extent, even some people suggest that the Chinese actually propping uh, repressive uh, regimes or authoritarian governments in Africa who cannot find aid or who cannot be financed by traditional donor agencies from uh, uh, the Western uh, institution. So discourses suggest that China is basically there to prop these regimes. Uh, then the other thing which sort of kind of drove me to be researching this topic is, uh, again, in media discourses, uh, Africa is presented as very uh, less agenda in the sense that it is trumped by Chinese uh, interests, again, in the sense that the Chinese tend to dominate the decision-making patterns. So by exploring the Ethiopian engagement with the Chinese, I'm trying to challenge this thesis or to challenge this discourse, which supposes the dominance of, uh, of, uh, of the Chinese. Through a fieldwork that I conducted in Ethiopia between 2017 and 2018, the data that I collected upon interviewing Ethiopian government officials, Chinese government officials, Ethiopian enterprises, Chinese enterprises, and the local communities where these wind farms are established, suggested that the Ethiopian government was in charge of these deals. Now, this comes at the backdrop of existing dominant discourses which suggest that the Africans are less capable, they cannot do anything meaningful, they cannot uh, carve their policy spaces, they cannot control their destiny, they cannot influence the interaction with external stakeholders. So this research is important, in particular in the Ethiopian context, because it provides evidence that it is not always the case that Africans are not able to engage meaningfully with external uh, stakeholders.